welcome to Pursuit of Passion. I'm Chef Jamie Vincent Bordenero, here to share with you at home recipes, tips, and techniques to give you the tools to cook memorable meals for you and your loved ones. It is springtime, the sun is shining, the weather is beautiful, and let's have a gorgeous spring feast. Today, featuring lovely lamb from Colorado that's been simply marinated with some Herbe de Provence, a really great blend of savory thyme, as well as oregano, fresh rosemary, which is classic and iconic with lamb. Of course, plugra butter, which will help with the roasting and caramelizing process. We'll, we will be serving it with a beautiful ratatouille, which is an essential spring staple. It is vibrant, delicious, well-balanced, featuring eggplant, yellow squash, zucchini, fresh tomatoes, onion, garlic, and red bell pepper. In addition, alongside our lamb and our ratatouille, we will be taking some beautiful heirloom baby Yukon gold potatoes, roasting them with some garlic and rosemary. And then we'll do something a little uh, unique, a little bit of a modern take on the presentation of the dish. We're going to take fresh zucchini and yellow squash, shave them on a mandolin. That's this slicing device right here that will help us create even thin sheets. And then roll up our ratatouille for a ratatouille roll up. Now, you don't have to do that at home, of course, but uh, we'll We'll do a little technique session, just for fun. Let's cook. So as always, I like to start out with the longest cooking process, the thing that takes the longest to cook. And for today, that is our ratatouille. So I've taken the liberty of doing all the slicing and dicing ahead of time. As you can see, everything has been small diced the onions and garlic as well. The garlic you want to do just a bit smaller than a, than a small dice um, just because it can become overwhelming but I did not fully mince it this time because uh, I really do want the garlic flavor to be present. So we'll get our pan nice and hot. Add in some oil. You can use olive oil or vegetable oil. And I like to start out with our eggplant. The ratio of eggplant to everything else is about two to one. Uh, two to one for the zucchini, the yellow squash, the tomato, the red bell pepper. It's a two to one ratio. Eggplant gives it kind of this beautiful, savory, meaty quality as well as a nice, delicious texture. And immediately we'll add in about a tablespoon of kosher salt. I have it at a fairly high heat. You want to make sure you have enough oil that coats the bottom of the pan, but it's not too much. Don't forget eggplant does soak in oil. And I can see we'll need a little bit more to make sure that we have a proper cooking medium so that the eggplant does not burn and then become bitter. What we're doing right now is drawing out the moisture of the eggplant to cook it, give it a palatable texture. And then once you've sweated down your eggplant, you can add in your onions and garlic. And again, we're layering the flavoring, layering the seasoning. So we want one more pinch of kosher salt, which will help to season the overall mixture, but also draw out the moisture of our vegetables, our aromatics. All part of the subtleties and nuances that really elevate your cooking to the next level. And 
and this might take between five to ten minutes depending on the strength of your cooktop. I'm going to expedite the process a little bit, add in our zucchini and yellow squash. I put them together because they cook at relatively the same time. And now is a good time to add in our herb de Provence, which we have marinated the lamb in. Just simply herb de Provence. You could also use olive oil as well. That's a nice way to transfer on that flavor in addition to the herb de Provence. And we want to add in the dried herbs early on in the cooking process to give them time to fully integrate their flavor into the mixture. And in case you're wondering, that particular film that came out with the same name as this preparation features something that looks a little different than this. This is the actual classical ratatouille preparation, the one that you may have seen in this particular film uh, is actually referred to as a Bialdi, but definitely have the same flavor profile as a ratatouille. All right, now we have a good amount of moisture released from our zucchini and our eggplant and our onions and garlic. We'll add in our beautiful red pepper. And once again, layer that flavor, layer that seasoning. It will help all the moisture to be released from all the vegetables and aromatics and infuse a lot of delicious flavor together. Cooking ratatouille also gives you the added bonus of your house smelling absolutely fantastic. Then we're going to go in with our tomato. The tomato is a lot less uh, structurally dense, so it'll cook down and break down quicker, which is why we're adding it towards the end of the process. And then once those have time to sweat nicely, we're going in with about a quarter cup of tomato paste. Tomato paste gives you a really nice savory flavor, which kind of acts in a tag team manner with the eggplant to boost up the umami factor. It also adds a great viscosity and body to your ratatouille. The only thing you want to do to make sure that you cook your tomato paste thoroughly, because raw tomato paste flavor can be a bit bitter and off-putting. But once you give it this nice toasted note from cooking it thoroughly, it adds so much of a savory, delicious note and fragrance and aroma. Again, subtleties and nuances. It's going to elevate the overall dish. And once it's stewed down nicely, I would cook it on lower heat for about 20 to 30 minutes until all the vegetables are nice and cooked thoroughly and their moisture has been released. I add in fresh basil that I just hand tore because I want all that vibrant basil freshness, which is indicative of the spring season and just brightens up this delicious mixture. Next up, we'll go ahead and move on to our potatoes. Yukon Gold potatoes are fantastic for roasting. They have a beautiful, beautiful texture to them. They hold up nicely, not to mention their flavor is phenomenal. So we'll go ahead and reorganize a little bit, rearrange things, get ourselves a minimalist workstation, which will allow us to think in a focused manner and relax and enjoy the cooking process. Since we have some really great heirloom Yukon Gold to potatoes to start with, I don't like to do too much to cover up the flavor, but only to enhance their deliciousness. I'm just cutting them simply into these rounds about a quarter to a half inch in thickness. That will allow them to get some caramelization when they're in the oven, which we have set at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and we're not cutting them too thin because that would cause them to sort of break down by the time they got color in the oven, which will give them that delicious roasted potato aroma that we crave. And be very careful, the potatoes obviously are round, so they tend to roll and move while you're cutting. So always have a good grip and keep the knuckles bent backwards, safety first. And as for the garlic in this case, I love garlic with this preparation. I always like to have these contiguous flavor profiles that permeate the dish. It really creates a more cohesive eating experience. And what we're doing with the garlic, I'm actually going to leave the peel on that will prevent it from burning in the oven, but still allow you to deliver maximum flavor into our potatoes. So just about four cloves will do. And I'm just gonna give them a gentle crush with the palm of my hand. That'll help to release that garlic delicious aroma. Throw it right on top of our potatoes. We'll go in with some canola oil. That will help the browning process. Kosher salt. A sprig of rosemary or two. Again, we wanna keep these flavors consistent throughout the dish. And as I said before, some beautiful herbs de Provence. If you prefer, you can use oregano or Italian seasoning blend if, you, if you'd like. I think keeping it French with the ratatouille preparation is a nice, nice way to go. And a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper as well. So we'll roast that for about 20 minutes until tender and caramelized. Our ratatouille is gently cooking nicely. We'll put that on the back burner and get a pan ready for our lamb. So as I said, our lamb has been marinated very simply with herb de Provence. We're just gonna use salt and black pepper on the outside that will obviously season it and also promote delicious flavor. So we want a medium saute pan for two lamb chops. That's the appropriate size. You don't want it to be too voluminous where the caramelization will be overly concentrated in one particular area. Too small and it tends to promote steaming which will prevent a nice roasted caramelization on the outside of your lamb. Give ourselves a nice wipe down. Take care of whatever we don't need and add the oil to the pan. You can tell your oil is nice and hot once it's nice and fluid like that. And it's just, just enough oil to cover the bottom of the pan, not too much oil. We don't want to pan fry, we want to pan roast and get a nice, beautiful saute. So let me go ahead in with some kosher salt seasoning from a height to allow the salt to dissipate and evenly cover our beautiful lamb. Season on both sides and we'll go ahead with some fresh cracked black pepper. So we're gonna go ahead in with our presentation side down. The side I, I like to start with is the one that's the most flat that will more evenly hit uh, and contact the surface of the pan and the oil to give it a beautiful even crust. Now I see a good amount of smoke developing, so I'm gonna turn it down a little bit, turn the heat down. We should be going at about a medium heat. If it was something that I was searing really quickly, I'd go a little higher, but we wanna develop that crust promote browning nice and even. So we're gonna just lower the heat just a slight bit. 
And once we get a nice golden brown color on the one side, we'll flip it, add in our plugra butter, our rosemary, and get it roasting in the 375 degree oven for approximately 10, 8 to 10 minutes, uh, since they're about one inch thick, depending on your preferred doneness. That should get you to a nice medium rare. I'm going to increase our heat so that we can get that beautiful golden brown that we're looking for. And in the meantime, for our ratatouille preparation, I set up a steaming apparatus. That'll be for our zucchini roll-ups. Just get about an inch of water into a sauce pot with a steam top on top. And don't forget the lamb will brown a little bit in the oven as well, so you don't want to get it too dark, too caramelized, just nice deep golden brown. Feel free to make any necessary adjustments to the heat. Again, your cooktop may differ from mine. But that's the beautiful thing about cooking are the variables that as long as you are aware of them, you can control them. There we go. We have a nice deep golden brown. I'm going to take it off the heat, add some rosemary and plugra butter, and we're going to let that finish cooking in the oven. As a matter of fact, I talked about consistent flavor profiles, so let me head to my pantry. And we're going to go ahead and gild the lily a little bit, intensify that aroma experience by grabbing some garlic, giving it a little crush, keeping it again in the skin so that it doesn't over caramelize or burn in the oven. And that goes into a 375 degree oven, as I said, about eight minutes, eight to 10 minutes, depending on your oven and your preferred doneness. So clear off our workstation. Get our steamer nice and hot. And here's a look at our ratatouille. Now that it's stewed a good amount of time, you can see how the tomato paste and the eggplant that's been cooked nicely has given it this beautiful viscous texture, absolutely fragrant and aromatic. It's wonderful. That's going to be great with our lamb. What we want to do is take a small portion of this. If you are interested in trying your hand at the zucchini roll up, take a small portion of it and cool it down in the freezer until it is just about room temperature or even below. So we have a little bit of the mixture that's been cooled and let's grab our zucchini and squash to make our roll ups. First thing I want to do is create even length with our zucchini and squash. So I'll just simply trim off the top and the tail end and then match up our zucchini with the squash so that they are even thickness. I'm sorry, even length. Next up, I'm just going to trim some of the side. This will give you a flat surface to work on your mandolin if you, again, want to try your hand at this preparation. And now we can go ahead and start to shave our zucchini into these cool little ribbons. And you want them to be pliable, but not so thick that they start to break once they are rolled up. Always important to think about application of what you're cutting or trimming or slicing. And when using the mandolin, please be very cautious. Again, safety first. As I've just demonstrated, you want to have a firm grip on the outside. Have your fingers pointed upward so that none of them get caught in the blade and just simply 
push the vegetable through. And we need about five ribbons of each, so I'll set that all aside. And it's important to keep it so that the presentation side of your zucchini or squash is facing in the same direction. That way, once we go to roll it up, we'll be able to see on the outside that beautiful, vibrant, fresh vegetable that we want to see. All right. So we have our planks ready. We have a nice mise en place. We have our ratatouille that's been cooled down and a spoon as well. We'll put some plastic wrap on the cutting board to create the foundation for our roll-up. And again, if you don't see yourself going through the process, that's completely okay. You can simply serve the ratatouille on the plate as a standalone accoutrement. Otherwise, check it out and join in the fun. So this is the bright, vibrant side. So I'm going to put it facing the outside because once we roll it up, you will be able to see it from a presentation standpoint, and that's what we want. And I'm just simply lining it up, paying attention to make sure that they are equally distanced apart alternating pieces for presentation going from green zucchini to yellow squash it just gives it a very vibrant appeal and it's just something unique that you can do or or not do and i think it's a great way to encourage uh, if you have young kids at home especially encourage them to eat their vegetables by doing unique presentations like so so we'll just line these up in alternating fashion, trying to keep the distances equal. Finish up with a green zucchini. Place those aside for later. Add a little bit of kosher salt. And we'll go ahead and actually steam. That's what we have our steaming apparatus for, is to steam these pieces so that they're cooked through and even more pliable, making it easier to roll on up. So we're making a nice little package that we will be able to steam without water getting into the zucchini, diluting the flavor. We have our steam pot. Add a nice steam. And we'll just simply close that up for about three minutes. Go ahead and steam it until it has a nice tender texture. Once it's fully steamed, we can go ahead and unwrap, separating the layer of plastic, add in our ratatouille mixture. I would say a couple tablespoons for all seven or eight of these pieces should be plenty. You don't want to put too much in because once you're rolling it, you want to be able to roll it without it falling out of the sides. And the plastic is going to be our friend and help us to make an easy roll up. Again, if you're doing it at home, you'll probably steam it for a little longer than I did. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to demonstrate what you'll be doing. You want to use the plastic wrap to help push in the mixture and keep everything nice and tight. Tuck in the sides while you're rolling. Give it a good firm press. Don't press too hard. We don't want to squeeze out that delicious ratatouille filling. And one last rollover should do the trick. As I said, it'll definitely stay together a lot more easily if you steam it thoroughly. But that's the main idea. And I have one that I actually did steam thoroughly earlier. So you can see what the result will look like once it's steamed nicely. You have a beautiful little roll up with our, our ratatouille filling. 
And now that we're just about ready on our lamb, we can go ahead and give that a check, grab that from the oven, and start to plate up our delicious dish. I like a nice simple white plate that will help all the vibrancy of the ingredients and freshness to kind of pop on the plate. Our beautiful lamb is roasted, has a nice deep golden brown color to a beautiful medium rare. And our potatoes also have developed a little bit of color and are cooked through. For the sauce component of the dish, I have created a simple vinaigrette, very simple, just add one part balsamic vinegar, in this case one tablespoon, to two, two tablespoons of simply olive oil, and fresh basil chopped in there as well. I wanted to keep it light and vibrant. I think also the ratatouille in this case kind of acts as the sauce component, if you will. So we'll just go ahead and start to plate up our dish. Ratatouille roll up. And doing this also allows you to kind of present the ratatouille without it just being splashed on the plate, which is totally fine, obviously. But once in a while, kind of getting out there and doing something a little unexpected and, as I said, could really encourage your young ones to eat their vegetables. And it's fun for you as well. So why not? It's a win-win. So we'll layer our potatoes in a nice little pile, keeping everything relatively consistent in shape. And it's time to add in our delicious lamb chops. We'll get a little bit of height out of the dish with these beautiful bones. And it's nice to really feature the star ingredient of your plate, which in this case is our lamb although our ratatouille comes in a close second. And we'll go ahead and splash on this beautiful balsamic vinaigrette with the basil. Add some moisture to our roll up. And some flavor and acidity and brightness to our beautiful lamb. So just like that, for our spring season, we have the beautiful ratatouille roll-up, freshly roasted Colorado lamb, beautiful garlic rosemary roasted potatoes. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope I've inspired you today to spring into action with this fantastic plate to make memorable meals for you and your loved ones. Please enjoy. Thank you to Nutmeg TV for the platform and the opportunity. You can check out the episode as well as all the other episodes of Pursuit of Passion on the Nutmeg TV app. You could also head to www.pursuitofpassion.net to link to all of the recipes for the plates as well as other videos as well as my YouTube channel as well. So check that out. Thank you so much once again for watching, for joining me, and hopefully for cooking along. Please be well on your Pursuit of Passion.